Problem 110. If p is the product of the integers from 1 to 30 inclusive, what is the greatest integer k for which 3 to the k power is a factor of p? So p is going to be the integers 1 times 2 times 3 all the way to 30. And uh, they're saying what is the greatest integer k such that 3k uh, is a factor of p? So 3k is divisible by p. Okay. You know, I'm sure there's an algebraic equation, is, uh, algebraic way to solve this equation, but sometimes I'm a visual guy, so sometimes it's just easier just to write everything out So and, and just count up the number of factors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write everything out. This doesn't really take longer than, than uh, 30 seconds to do, so you don't really have to worry about time too much. Uh, but if you're not a visual kind of guy, and you can actually do this um, by crunching numbers, then more power to you. But here's how I would do it. Okay, we're going to be looking for the number of times 3 appears in all of these uh, numbers, right? Because we're going to be adding together all those 3s in order to figure out what k could be if maximized. We got one here. Six is two times three, so we got another one here. Three, 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 and four. I'm just gonna keep doing this. Six is the same as two and three, right? Three, nine is three and three, so there's actually three threes here. And for thirty, there's 3 and 10. Now we just add them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 threes. That means 3 to the 14th power is the maximum amount that can be divisible by, or that the P is divisible by 3K. I, I wrote this wrong. So what is the maximum so that P is divisible by 3K? And it's going to be 3 to the 14th power. 14 is uh, answer choice C. Problem 111. If candy bars that regularly sell for 0 point, uh, so 40 cents each are on sale for 2 for, zero, uh, two for 75 cents, what is the percent reduction in the price of two such candy bars purchased at the same price? Okay, so two such candy bars. So if we bought two of these, we would have, you know, it would be 80 cents, right? Uh, so previously, before the sale, if you wanted two candy bars, you'd have to pay 80 cents. Now you're paying 75 cents. So what is the amount of uh, decrease? You know, you're, you're saving 5 cents overall. And they're saying, what is, what is the percent reduction? Okay, so we're going from, hmm, percent reduction. Let me think if there's a, a different way that we can do this. Uh, well, no, let's just uh, keep doing it this way. Okay, so five cents. I was gonna see if we could simplify this so we didn't have to deal with with the, uh, with the decimals, but you know, I think it'll be okay. Five cents over eighty cents. That is equal to eight five. Let's see, move over twice. Five zero six two. Okay, so zero point zero six two five, and that is going to be six point two five percent, which twenty five percent. That's six and a fourth percent, and that is going to be answer choice B. Number 112 says, if s is greater than 0, and the square root of r over s equals s, what is r in terms of s? In terms of s just means that the answer will have s in it, so you don't have to figure out what s is first. So they say s is greater than 0, so we don't have to worry about this being a negative. s is going to be a positive, so let's square both sides. r 
over s equals s squared, and we cross multiply and we get s squared times s, which equals s to the third power. That is answer choice D. Number 113. Number 113 uh, has a drawing, so I will draw that right now. It has sort of a door frame that looks like this. And this part of the frame is shaded. There. That's the best I can do. They tell us that this is six feet, this entire thing up here, and this is eight feet. And they want to know the, what do they want to know? They want to know what fraction of the door's front surface is covered by the trim, or what part is, is shaded. What is the fraction of the shaded portion to the portion that is not shaded? They also tell us that uh, the width of these are one. Same here. These are all one. So what's the best way to figure this out? The best way, I think, will be to actually uh, cut this into pieces. So I'm just going to find a good color here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into pieces and find the area individually. And then, quite separately, we'll find the area of the entire thing and set up a ratio. So let's start off by figuring out how uh, what is the area of the entire door. 6 times 8 is 48 feet squared. Okay, now 6, we know this is 1, and this is 1, so this middle part is going to be 6 minus 1 minus 1, and that's going to be 4. So 4 times 1 is going to be 4, so that's that part's 4. This part is going to be 4 as well. Since this is 4, same thing here. And 8 times 1 is going to be 8. That's going to be 8 on this side. So 8 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 is going to get you 28. And then this can be simplified to 7 over 12. And 7 over 12 is going to be answer choice D. Number 114. If a equals negative 0 0.3, which of the following is true? And they, they have a bunch of different answers where it's like a is smaller than a squared, smaller than a or a cubed, or a cubed, smaller than a squared, smaller than a, etc. So basically we need to figure out a, a squared, and a cubed, and figure out what's the biggest and what's the smallest. Well, a, they tell us, is negative 0 0.3. A squared is going to be a positive. Negative and a negative is positive. It's going to be uh, 0 0.09. And A cubed is going to be a negative again. That's going to be 0 0.027. So looking at this, the largest to smallest is going to be A is the smallest, followed by A cubed. And a squared is going to be the largest, because it's the only positive. And that is answer choice B. Number 115. Uh, this says that Mary's income is 60% more than Tim's income. So Mary's income is 60%, that's 1.6, uh, Tim's income. And Tim's income is... 40% less than Juan's income. 40% less, that's uh, 40, 60, okay, so 0 0.6 Juan's income. They're saying what percent of Juan's income is Mary's income? So Juan's income compared to Mary's income is what percent? That's the same as saying what is 100J over M? That's what we're going to be solving for. So we have these two ratios here. Let's Figure out what the relationship is. So m equals 1.6t, and we should try to set m equal to j. t equals 1 over 1.6m. Normally, I don't like to mix fractions with decimals, but I think in this case, it should be OK. If that's the case, then 1 over 1.6m equals 0.6j. 
uh, cross multiply to figure out the relationship between the two, and you get m equals what is m equal? m equals uh, one point. Okay, one point six, zero point six, thirty six. Okay, zero point three six j. Now let's set this equation to wait. Is it zero point three six? No, thirty six. Six times one times one. Okay, six times one is six plus the three from the thirty six. Okay, so it's actually going to be, haha, cut that in time. 0.96. M equals 0.96 J. So far so good. Now let's plug the M into this equation that we're going to be solving for. 100 J over 0.96 J equals cancel out the J's and we are going to get 96 because of the way that we move the decimal over. 96. And remember that originally, you know, we are solving for a percentage, and it would be 96 over 100, right? So that's why it's 96%. 96% is going to be answer choice C. All right, now let's look at problem 116. And that has a graph. It's like this. City A, B, C, D, E. And you have city A, B, C, D, E. And they have lines going across like this. And also down. Like that. Ignore those. Pretend those aren't there. And they have dots. Three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. Okay, so it looks like this. It says each dot in the mileage table above represents an entry indicating the distance between a pair of five cities. If the table were extended to represent the distances between all pairs of 30 cities and each distance were to be represented by only one entry, how many entries would the table then have? So right now they're showing five cities and they're saying, what if we showed all pairs of 30 cities? Hmm. Okay, well, if there were 30 cities, right now, how many boxes are there? There are five and five, so, um, you know, that's going to be 25 boxes, right, for five. If there were 30 cities, it'd be 30 across and 30 down, and 30 times 30 is going to be 900. So there would be 900 boxes. What else uh, do we see here? We see that this never gets populated because... There is no distance between A, city A, and A, and city A. And there's no distance between city B and city B. So overall, there are five unpopulated boxes here. If you had 30 cities, there would be 30 unpopulated boxes, right? So we're going to have to keep that in mind, 30 unpopulated boxes. The other thing we realize is that we only fill out half of, you know, like half of this graph isn't filled out because we already know A and B. We don't need A and B again here. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, dots here out of uh, 25 possible. Um, let's see. Uh, that's basically half of the 25 minus the 5 that we've taken out, right? So what we would need to do is if we were to estimate 30 cities, we'd have to figure out half of 900 boxes and then subtract 30 from the answer. So 900 over 2 is uh, let's see, 450 minus 30 is going to be 420. Hmm, is that one of the answer choices? Or did I make a computation error? 450 minus 30 is, ah, here's what I did wrong. Okay, so what we're actually going to be doing is instead of taking half of that first, we're actually going to subtract the 30 because we're going to get rid of these. We're going to pretend these don't even exist. So we actually have 870 here. Then we divide by 2, yeah? 4, 3, 5. So 435 is going to be the answer, and that is one of the answer choices. That's actually answer choice B. See you in the next video.